This is the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. I am your host, Dean Harris. I'm with Crest Core Realty over on Summer Avenue. Really appreciate you guys joining us this morning. You could be listening on AM 990 Memphis. 107.9 FM, or you could be streaming us online at kwam990.com. So thank you for all you guys listening in one of those three areas. And then, of course, Facebook Live, if you guys have joined us on our show's Facebook page, the Memphis Real Estate Hour, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, the Memphis Real Estate Hour, guys, will concentrate on investing in Memphis real estate. Uh, we focus a little bit on our residential market as well. And I will have the local and national vendor partners of ours on the show from time to time, uh, sharing knowledge with you on how to become an investor in Memphis or how to become a better investor uh, here in Memphis. So I recommend or I remind you guys every single show that I am an investor myself. Uh, if you have an old home or you have that uh, inherited home or something that's beat up, torn up, <coughs> terrible, terrible shape, that doesn't really matter. You guys just give us a call or shoot us a text message at 901-619-6170 and I'll get you a cash offer on that home today. Um, again, I mentioned Facebook Live, but thank you guys for joining us there. Uh, you can go to the show's Facebook page, The Memphis Real Estate Hour, and you can uh, check out all the last uh, shows from prior weeks and uh, catch up on everything that you've been hearing here on the show. If you've missed anything, all the videos are on there, so feel free to tune in there and um, catch up with us. Last week on the show, Dan Butler was in here with me. We discussed... Uh, how Crestco Realty can help you as an investor. Uh, we try not to come on this show and, and toot our own horn and make this a hour-long advertisement for Crestco Realty. So uh, last week's show, we kind of did that a little bit. Um, really good feedback. I had some um, investors this week call me and were, were unsure of some of the services that we provided, so we were happy to, to let everybody know that. So go to the Facebook page again, uh, The Memphis Real Estate Hour, and you can check out the video from last week. Uh, today's show rundown, I am going to have two investments of the week here at the bottom of the hour. Uh, one occupied, one not occupied, so we've got uh, two good options at the bottom of the hour. And then Dan Butler's on the show today. We're going to be talking about interest rates rising uh, and what should you do with that, uh, how should you react, and then recourse and non-recourse loans. So let's get right into it. Dan, welcome to the hey, show. Hey, good morning. Um let, let's dive right into this interest Amen. rates rising. It's a big topic. Yeah, you know, everywhere. Everywhere. Everybody's talking about it right now. Um, Seems like a lot of volatility in the market. Yeah, there's you know. so many uncertainties, and people are wondering. A lot like, of tweets. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. What's happening? What's going on? Talk a little bit about what you see. I've got an angle that I see, but from your sphere of influence, your circle, your day, what are you seeing uh, as far as the rates right? I mean, we know they're rising, but what are you mm -hmm. seeing as kind of the aftermath or, uh, or or from that, really? Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next, you know, say 12 to 24 months with the interest rates rising just because the um, um, it affects your numbers, you know, mm -hmm. and what you can pay for an investment. So yep. you got a hot supply – or, excuse me, demand, which is affecting supply, and you couple that with rising interest rates, what does that mean? You know, like – so it gives you a lot to think about when you're analyzing your numbers and – and really, I, I you know I think it it really boils down to what's you know how long you want to be in this game. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. you're just doing a flip or wholesaling or none of, that, none of it matters. None of that really. I mean, it matters, but not really. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're a buy and hold person, yeah, this matters. So um, thinking about interest rates definitely makes you know a difference. What about you? I'm I'm not seeing a whole lot of pushback yet. I'm not. I don't. I don't have many investors calling me saying. Hey man, the, the rates are rising up. I need to. I'm, I'm freaking out because, and I've said this from the very beginning. You know, when we talk on the show about building your team and part vendor partners, well, hard money is one of one of our, I, I guess, uh, areas is, of our business. Yeah. Um, and I've used it before. Yeah. And I'll use it again. Yeah. And 
it doesn't you know and a lot of people say well why you know it's such a higher interest rate mm -hmm. <laughs> well it, that is true but the end the, the goal the end game goal is to have a home paid off that's right right so if you can make it work in your five or seven years however long you're going to hold it then what's the difference right you know i yeah. understand if you've got 500 of these and you've got uh th there's a mortgage out on 300 of them mm -hmm. and it's all in the same similar interest rates and then you're about to take a huge jump now that, then you that, that's cause for concern sure right? i understand that but um we don't have very many investors that have 500 so right my, my point is is that it to go from the beginning to the end if somebody makes money along the way and it still fits into my numbers, it doesn't matter to me. Right. I, I'm trying to look at it big picture wise, sure. Not three years. You're buying an asset. Yeah, not yeah. not just short term. Hey, I'm paying a little higher interest rate to this person for a short term. Yeah. So I would apply that same thought process to rising to rising rates. Is yeah. You know, if it you got to buy differently. Yes. To me. Yeah, you got to buy a little bit differently and um, find that better deal. You got to search a hundred deals instead of ten to find the deal that matches what can match that interest rate. That's right. Not yeah. a, it's not a discouraging thing for me. It's just it, it's the same. It's the same thing if supply goes down. It's the same thing if if uh, you know investors stop buying for you. Just got to pivot mm -hmm. and find a different way to get the end result. Right. So I mean, to me, it's I don't I haven't seen a ton of pushback from any of my investors. Um, uh, and I quit it kind of a little bit to, you know, dollar cost averaging of stocks, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you, what's, what's the best day to do to buy a stock today, right? That's Yesterday right. was probably better, yeah, right. but today's the best, right? right? You know, and so you need to, you need to jump on the train and invest money, whether it's in the houses or stock market or whatever. Cause if you just sit there and wait, well, I'm gonna wait for the market to go back down. You'd be sitting there I mean, all day. You'd be sitting there all day. So you just got to, to dive into whatever that, that is. And, and that's what we're talking about today. Like. At the end of the day, I mean, you care, but who cares? Like, right? Interest rates, like, just. I mean, I can remember the time I was paying, you know, eight yeah. percent. I mean, like for a regular loan for rental property, that was in right. the, you know, mid two thousands, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had a bunch of loans, which was fun when you get to the re refinance phase when the market's tanked and yeah. things were four and five percent. You know, that yeah. was a fun time to refinance. You know, because that was a big hit, and that's where I actually. You know, if I think about it, that's where I took loans from a 15 year. I was down to 12, and I put on a 10. I'd actually gained two years, you know, of buy down time yeah. mm -hmm. with the same payment. Mm -hmm. You know, so you ride it up and you ride it down. You just, you know, you just. That's kind of way I look to at what, it. You just right. adjust to what what the market is giving you. Because what are you gonna? I mean, what are you gonna do? It's, well, I'm I'm just gonna get out of this. Well, if you analysis by paralysis, that's what a lot of people are gonna do. Well, I, I do. Th I, to your point, I think at some point there will be a shift to where people will put their, you know, their money in something else besides yeah. the houses because the interest rates seem so high. Mm -hmm. um, which usually when that when they're higher, I think you get a better return on stuff like annuities and CDs and stuff, a little safer yeah. instruments. You know. I also think we'll have that'll help. You know, I, I think at the same breath we're saying they go up, people might stop. Don't you think the prices will go back down? I do. You do? I, yeah. I think if they keep rising and less people buying, there's gonna be there's gonna be that group of buyers or group of sellers, owners that have got to sell. Yeah. They wanna get out. Wanna get out. And nobody's paying the price. Well they're gonna they're gonna they're yeah. gonna drop their prices to get rid of it. Well I think that's gonna be coupled with some yeah. sort of correction in the market with a recession or something like that, so that when there's job I think the next time a job percentages take a dip when there's you know loss of jobs and yep. layoffs and you know where the percentages go up a couple percent i think that's when you're going to see housing really get affected because people don't have the money to pay you yep. know to rent that house and you're going to see the same thing we saw you know late 2000s where you'd have two or three families that would bundle up together in one house right <laughs> yeah, right and so that's where you saw the demand for rentals go down for a minute because those people that lost all those houses left and right you know, they weren't, they, number one, they couldn't, you know, couldn't go buy, couldn't go buy. And number two, you just had that on your record. There's a lot of people that wouldn't rent to you, you know, except for maybe a mom or pop landlord that yeah. doesn't check all that stuff, but you know, institutions are going to check all that stuff. So, yep. you know, and some, you know, some people are forgiving on that, but it just, it definitely, you know, people were recovering. So that's why they would, yeah, they'd 
if you're an investor out there, I mean, this is my thought about this too. If you're an investor out there, you know, don't be afraid of a bubble. I'm not. And I'm, that, that's, I'm ready for it. I'm me too. Getting ready for yeah, it. So you you feel the same way. I do. Yeah. I'm. <clears throat> it's one reason why I got into this area of real estate mm -hmm. because I think it's bubble. Let me caution. This is an absolute, but I think <laughs> it's bubble proof hmm. to a certain extent. And what do you mean by that? All right. When it's going well right now, yeah, people are flooding us and calling and buying houses. Right. right. When it's going bad, if it goes bad and it dips, another set I'm gonna of people. have another pool of investors yeah. who are going to call Different me pool, and want to buy because it's going down. Yeah. There'll be more cash buyers. Yeah. There'll be more people or more sh uh, stronger buyers, I should say, as well yeah. as cash. But it'll open up a whole other thing. We'll see more foreclosures. I mean, Wendy Greenlaw was on here last month talking about a record low for foreclosures. Low, yeah. So it, it wouldn't hurt. You know, I don't. I don't wish bad on the economy or wish bad on any individual. But if it did take a dip, mm -hmm. it isn't going to hurt us. So if you're an investor out there listening, and and you know you start hearing interest rates rising and supply and demand is going nuts and it's crazy and it, you can't find inventory, so that's okay. Right. I mean, we're, you know, this in the the end of the world. Right. You've been investing for since 2001. 16, 17 years. Okay. Yeah. So you've gone through. A high, high time in the market because 03, 04, 05 was great. Yeah. New construction was being built. I know this because yeah. I was selling them like hotcakes. Right. And then in 7, 8, 9, we took an enormous crash. Yeah. And you were still investing and buying then, right? I didn't stop. I didn't stop. I accelerated, actually. That's exactly my point. So, so if we took a dip right now, would it stall us out for three to four or five months? It might, just might. because people adjusting. Adjusting to it, yeah. But the overall picture would still remain strong, right. in my opinion, because we'll have right. those different buyers, different buyers. You wanna, um, go ahead. You want to talk through what what like one point? Yeah, why don't you do that? If they're up a half, you know, they're, they're up about a half to one point from a year ago. Why don't you give us an example and talk through, you know, what kind of difference that makes? Yeah, it was interesting because I hadn't done this in a long time. You know, just effective interest rates, but I. You know, I met with a, a potential seller last weekend, and we were playing around with interest rates, so I really saw kind of the, the light bulbs going off of just reminding me of the effects of interest rate. You know what I mean? Like, so if if we say they're up 0.5 to 1% some last year, does that sound about right? Something like Something that. Something like that. Three so just let's point. call it 1%. So if a guy's buying a $100,000, guy or girl buying a $100,000 rental with 20% down, mm -hmm. so that's an $80,000 note. That one percent is costing you um, forty-seven dollars more a month, forty-seven fifty on mm -hmm. a thirty-year note. So you play that out, and if you just look at the return on the twenty thousand dollars invested, all right. So a leverage return, so a cash on, cash flow uh, return on a four percent return is about thirteen percent. Mm -hmm. You know, at five percent interest rate, it goes to ten and a half. So you're almost three percentage points difference on a leveraged <laughs> return. That's right. So mm -hmm. I, I thought that was interesting. You know, these are all my assumptions. I, I assumed I think 40% for expenses and that kind yeah. of thing. And then yeah. leftover for your, your note principal and interest. So, uh, but a 3% return r r difference in return on your $20,000 investment on a 30 year note, a 15 year note, I think it's going to be even. Yeah. It's crazy how I, mean, I should have done that on 15, 15 year. Yeah. It, it, the cash well, that is a difference now. I mean, that's what two point seven percent difference. Yeah. Two point eight percent difference. Yep. Um, so a, a lot of our questions go to like, why should you? You know, what should you do? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what's the reaction? What? Because I, you know, I, I imagine there's somebody listening right now that's going, well, f that's all fine and good. Thanks mm -hmm. for telling me that. Now, what should I do? Yeah. What should you do? I'd say buy now. <laughs> that I, I mean, and that sounds like we're coming across as the salespeople, but no. the truth of the matter is, if you're going to buy, keep buying, keep buying. Right. I mean, it. You don't want to wait and have it rise now because interest rates will continue to rise. <clears throat> so what do you, you know, that, they're not. There's going. nothing in the in the forecast of the markets or what the government's saying. They're not saying, hey, we might tick it back a couple basis points. <laughs> they're actually saying we're going to gradually increase it over time, you know, to a new level. Um, mm -hmm. So, I think that. Uh, but the key to it is, I think, for us, for our listeners to understand, like, is to lock it in as long as you can. Yes. You know, I had a deal that I brought to Douglas uh, this weekend, and his first response was, we do a 15-15. You know what I mean by when I yeah. say that? So a 15-year amortized re uh, loan for 15 years. Yep. Not, I mean, not many people are going to do that. Banks won't, certainly won't do it. 
mm-hmm. you know we've locked we've we've locked a couple banks in at seven years mm-hmm. um but it's most of them want three or less you know they, they want to lock it in a short term because they want that rate modification they want their money if it goes it, up they want if the it goes money. up they want the money right mm-hmm. and so that's why the fannie mae loan that we you know do a lot of with our investors that you know the 25 percent down on a 30-year fixed yeah you know you can, you don't have to do 30 but a ton of people do 30. that was my um, next suggestion is to do that yeah because that's locked rate right? i mean it keeps yeah you never have to worry about it it's like putting it you know what if it's five percent now it's five percent for the next 30 years that's strong I yeah mean, you can't that's um market proof if you will you know yeah. from the if you lock it in now and, and keep on going what do you think about refinancing you think that's smart to do oh yeah absolutely so in other words if you've got a portfolio of loans out there maybe refi them all in one commercial loan that's what i would suggest mm-hmm. you know get it locked in and you know combine all your, that's what we've done the last couple of years is just consolidating loans you know getting at the best interest rate you know taking stuff from seven or eight to you know 4.5 yeah you know and now it's probably 5.5 but that's still better than you know six and a half or whatever we were getting before on some of these longer term notes that we've had for years and years so do banks traditionally loosen up in your opinion here do banks traditionally loosen up when these rates go go higher i mean are they are they going to work harder with people to get in these loans so they can See, because it, and let me let me back mm-hmm. up. It seems to me that because it is a higher rate, they're interested in making you know more loans to get that higher interest uh, coming back to them. Are mm-hmm. they more flexible with people? Do they work with people more than what in the past? Because they know they're going to have to. I mean, because you could raise rents up or raise rates up to twenty percent, but right. if nobody borrows, then what's the difference? That's a great question. I don't, I don't think interest rates. It'd be good to have a banker on here to talk through that. I don't think interest rates affect what they want to do. You don't think so? I think it's just regulators and the appetite of the particular bank. I mean, well then, so even then behind the banks, the investors that are backing up the banks, do you think they're, you think they loosen up a little bit? Potentially. It seems yeah. like they would. Yeah. I mean, cause if they're going to raise rates and still have the same you know, hard, hard criteria, but banks think differently now that at the flip side, I could see them saying, well, now it's less cash flow. Their debt service covered ratio is less because yeah, you know, they're buying that fifty thousand dollar house that now, you know, costs you, you know, fifty, forty, fifty, sixty bucks more a month. You know, so your debt service ratio I'm gonna have to have more down, Mr. 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 Dean. Borrower. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Borrower. So I think that's that's Well not so that was my que- that that's kind of my question. So maybe they do require more. It, that's we should have a bank room. Yeah, that would be good to have a bank. Let's do that. Yeah, because I'm I'm trying to think like, okay, so if the rates rise, it seems like they're gonna have to loosen up the standards a little bit. Or yeah. wait on the adjusted sales prices, which you know who knows yeah. when, when and if that ever happens. But well, it's interesting if I think about interest rates just in general. Mm-hmm. I have the same spreadsheet that I've been using since <laughs> since two thousand three, probably. You know, I mean, the same format. Was it on a typewriter? <laughs> Not typewriter. <laughs> they had Excel back then, so it's still on Excel. Probably should be on Google Sheets or something, but. Uh, but it's the exact same, you know, all the difference that now is I've, I've upped my maintenance mm-hmm. from what I used to. I used to have the pie in the sky, like, oh, it'd only be 10 or 15%. No, let's put 20 plus, depending on, you know, what it is. Right. And then I, I just changed the interest rate, you know. I mean, that's one of the assumptions. Yeah. And so you plug in the interest rate of what the current market is, and that tells you what you can buy it at. And so that's your just, and that's what I did this weekend. You should see, you know, you laugh probably, but I just took my laptop into the, to the grocery store where the guy worked and I said, here's my spreadsheet. Let's, let's work the numbers. I just want, I don't want you, I want you to see here's your taxes. Here's your insurance. Here's what we say for maintenance. He's like, yeah, that's about right. You know, and just start playing with the numbers to come up with what was reasonable to offer. Mm -hmm. Um, and most people will get that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now where you get in trouble is if a buyer or a seller paid way more than what you're trying to offer. Right. But it just depends on how much pain they're in, you know. What, that's right. What, what's going on in their life, and they might be okay with that. That's right. You know? That's right. Uh, I got one guy that wants to sell a little office, you know, building, and you know, might not the best desirable area. And you know, I looked up what he, you know, he was talking in the forties, low forties, and I looked it up. I was like, man, the guy paid fifty two. I didn't know that when I talked to him, but mm. you know, of course, I want to be in at thirty, so I don't know how that twenty five, how that conversation is going to go, but. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> What is it, your your terms, his price? Your price, my terms. Yeah. Your terms, my price. You can't have show. both. You can't. 
That's another show you gotta, guys Which gotta check. Plays out. into this, right? It certainly does. The terms. Well, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, it yeah. certainly does. It plays right into it. It's um, your terms. Like if you can make it work, you know, here it is. So. Guys, I'm talking to Dan Butler with Crest School Realty here about uh, interest rates rising and, and what to do with that. Great little segment there. Uh, we're going to take a real short break. We're going to come back and talk about recourse versus non-recourse loans, and I'm going to give you the investments of the week. Guys, you're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on AM 990 Memphis. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. We'll be right back after this. Now, here's Mid-South weather from News Channel 3's Severe Weather Center. Brought to you by the Crescent Club. Hosting the people and ideas that move Memphis forward for nearly 30 years. Poplar and I-240. Call for a free tour at 901-684-1010. Showers or thunder showers likely with today's cold front. High temperatures nearing 60, many areas seeing more than an inch of rain. North winds will kick in and will be gusting tonight. Temperatures will drop into the mid-30s. Gradual clearing, but windy and colder for Saturday with a high only in the mid to upper 40s. Let Green King Spray make your neighbors green with envy. Have the best looking yard in the neighborhood by calling Green King Spray. 901-831-9466. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers. On The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Griffin, Cliff, Everton, and Mashmeyer PLLC is a full-service law firm with over 50 years of experience in the Memphis area. Real estate closings have continued to be the forefront of their law practice, which include residential, commercial, and development real estate transactions, drafting and negotiation of real estate contracts, and leases, business information, preparation of wills, probate, and estate planning. Their firm represents a number of builders, developers, investors, and local lending institutions and is approved to close transactions for most local banks and mortgage companies. In addition, they offer title search, title examination services, and title insurance through several well-established title insurance companies in the Memphis area, as well as Tennessee and Mississippi. They strive to offer services in a prompt and timely fashion while advising and representing clients in a zealous and professional manner. Should their offered services be of need, please contact William N. Griffin Jr. or any of their attorneys at 901 901- 752-1133. They can also be found online at www.gcemlaw.com or on Facebook. Is it a good time to buy or refi? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Are interest rates going sky high soon? Hi, I'm Moody Calloway, the mortgage lady at iBank Mortgage. I tell my customers to ask questions, get answers. So join me every Monday morning at 8, and I will tell you what's going on in today's still-changing mortgage world. Remember, most people think about mortgages a few times in their lives. I think about them every single day. Tune in Mondays at 8. CBS Money Watch, sponsored by TheraWorks Relief. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, welcome back to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. A little Green Day bringing us up. That's good. Um, Investments of the week, guys. I got two. Get your pens out. A little free money. You just got to spend some first. Uh, 3050 Arendelle. 3,000 block of Arendelle, 38118. This is a three-bedroom, two-bath house. It's occupied at $700 a month. Great condition home, too, over in Parkway Village. Uh, 49.9. Occupied, three-bedroom, two-bath, 3,000 block of Ar- Arendelle. Arendelle? Ar- Arendelle. Is it Arendelle? Yeah. You got a couple over there? I have one, one or two. Um, Arendelle, 38118, three-bedroom, two-bath, 49.9. It's occupied at $700 a month. That's a great, great rental and a, one of my favorite zip codes. If you're a, a repeat listener, you've heard me talk about that many, a many a time. Uh, 3,000 block of Piney Woods. 3,000 block Piney Woods. It's a three-bedroom, one-bath home. It's in 38118 as well. 
listed at 54.9. This one has been completely renovated from top to bottom. It's got brand new stuff all over it. Uh, floors, kitchen, carpets, paint, the whole bit. Um, give me a call on this one because I, I, we're, we're working to get it occupied right now. But 54.9, three bedrooms, one bath, 3,000 block of Piney Woods. This one will rent for probably 750. Uh, but it's been completely rehabbed. So you guys just call me on these or email. That's even better. Dean at CrestCore.com. I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you have about these two. And then if you want to visit our website, CrestCoreRealty.com, www.CrestCoreRealty.com. Uh, we post the investments of the week on there as well as all of our other listings. I think we've got 86, 87 now that you can go check out on there. And if you have any questions on them, just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to help. Uh, and see what we can do to get you in one of those. So uh, today, Dan Butler's in the studio. We've been talking about interest rates uh, rising, what to do with rising interest rates, how to react. I think the general consensus was to keep going, keep pressing ahead, yep. uh, maybe refinance some of uh, what you have right now. Lock it in as long as you can yep. for as many years before you have to. You know, if you do Fannie Mae, it's, it's a done, you know, yeah, done deal. That's right. If you do commercial notes and bank notes and that kind of thing, lock it in as, as long as you can. You know, as long as you can. We've we've done some ten tens. You know, we're kind of in the home stretch trying to get these things paid off. Some seven tens. Yep. You know, some five tens. Yep. You know, but as long as you get that amortization or get the balloon payment out as, as far, far as, as you as can. can. And we didn't really talk about that, but kind of the final thing I would like to say is, you do that. So that in five, say say you do it for five years, mm -hmm. you know, and and you pay it down so well. This is what I I, I ran a lot of numbers when I first started. Yep. Say on a fifteen year, especially a fifteen year note. That's why, I, you know me, I'm a fifteen year note guy, right? I always mm -hmm. hammer that home, kind of like buy right. Yep. But so you do a fifteen year note in five years. I mean, you pay down probably, you know, thirty percent of the note or something like that. Maybe at, at least. At least I need to I need to look into that, but I think it's at least thirty percent. Mm -hmm. So. If you got a, you know, forty thousand dollar note, you know, say thirty percent paid off, and I'll, I'll get those numbers for next time. But that's twelve thousand of it paid off, so it leaves you with what twenty eight thousand. Yep. Well, if you get in trouble with the interest rates rising, you can always go put that, you know, refinance twenty eight. Say it went to eight percent. Yep. You can put that back to a fifteen year note if you had to. That's right. It you gives know, you some options. Gives you some options. So, but when you put on a thirty year note. Your options are, more, are less limited because you didn't pay down as much. That's right. And I'll have those numbers next week, what that Okay, what that good. A like. little homework assignment. That's right. Um, recourse versus non-recourse loans. What's the difference, Dan? Um, recourse versus non-recourse. You know, recourse would be you sign, you know, and I just did a loan last week, and I'm signing my life away. Personal guarantee, personal guarantee. <laughs> hey, Leah, my wife, sign this personal guarantee. <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, yeah. don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, never mind <laughs> that. Um, just but, sign there. you slide it right in under your kid's homework. Kid's homework. Just sign this little right here. <laughs> oh, oh, here's wait. another one. <laughs> I did that early on. I was like, "What do you sign?" Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah, just forget and, uh, about it. So she'd start trying to read it all. But my teacher wanted me to have it signed, which is a big deal. People take personal guarantees is a huge deal. Yeah, and you, I mean, I think you should, but I mean, I and understand what you're signing, you know. But so that's a re uh, recourse. Non recourse is just you're signing um, as your entity. And you're signing that the loan is attached to whatever you're buying. Much it's, harder to get. Yes, much harder to get. Um, so yeah, it, it it takes the personal guarantee away off the table. And so I met some investors that absolutely won't sign a personal, personal guarantee. guarantee. Well, then how do they get? But then their LLC or their company, their entity must have some kind of business history or credit history. Then, um, if not, how do they get a non-recourse loan? So. It's interesting because I don't want to say they weren't out there, but they were very sparse when I first started in the early 2000s with Blackstones and different funds and people that just the plethora of money that's out there that looking for places to go. You know, now there's a non recourse product. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there, I just didn't know of any early on. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I don't know of any now. You tell me. Yeah. So, You're like, educating me. Yeah. I mean, you know, Colony Capital, uh, Lima One. I mean, there's all these capital, you know, the Blackstone has their own. I think I can't remember the, you know, what, which one that is. Colony, I think. It, but anyway, you know, Blackstone bought tens of thousands of houses, right? Yep. Well, then they figured out, well, I can't buy all the houses, so why won't why don't I loan to others that have houses? And so, by not by doing a non recourse loan, let's play that out. You know, you got a non recourse loan that Blackstone's 
financial arm, you know, loan to non recourse. Yep. So basically, loaning to that asset, right? Yep. If you fall, default on it and go bad with that loan, then they just plop it, yeah, they close on it, and they they win because they just put it right back over to their yeah. their home side of ownership. Does that make sense? Yeah. Pass it over to that side. So yeah, they want you to default. I mean, they, not that they say it, but they're okay they with it. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah, because they're adding to their portfolio. They're getting more property. I mean, that's, so, it's, so it's really smart. <clears throat> that's what our hard money lenders are thinking, right? Oh, yeah. I was with one of my mentors on Thursday, and, you know, his whole thing was just, if I get it back, I get it back. Yeah. But we're not going to loan but X percent of the value of the property because he's excited if he had to get it back. You know, it's a little bit of work, but yeah. there's so much juice he's, you know, left in the deal by the way he financed it. So That's the way that I've always heard hard money <laughs> lenders look at it. Oh, yeah. Is, I mean, if okay, so I'm loaning to a risky bo- a borrower. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Or what may be deemed one. Not all of them are risky, I don't guess. Right. But they're not doing nearly the, the background check that a mortgage company is no, doing. No. So if there's something that pops up and they don't do it, then they end up with a house. That's right. Um, what are some of the pros? Let's talk about, yeah. you know, uh, the, the non-recourse loans. Let's talk about some pros and cons. Uh, what are some, of, in your mind, from a non-recourse loan now, we'll get to recourse, but non-recourse, what are some of the pros of that? You know, I think you could just walk away from that asset without uh, affecting your personal finances. That's one. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows you to build other avenues of financial growth on your personal finances. You, you know, say you have a six-figure job, you bought some real estate on non-recourse, that's just sitting over there ginning. Yep. You can use your personal finance wherewithal to go do something else, like invest it, in whatever. In other words, the bankers don't know about it. Basically, yeah. yeah, they're not really checking. They're not seeing that because you're not personally guaranteed. It's not going against your credit, if you will. Yeah. Um, and you're not personally liable, right, when you're when non-recourse. Right. So. Um, a lot of people say, you know, and I've even heard you mention this before, but, I mean, you, you can you can go and get a, a non-recourse loan. You can go get three or four. Mm-hmm. And then go to a banker who's going to run your credit, mm-hmm. pull up your credit card and your mortgage on your personal home and your car note, right. but he's not going to see the other three notes that, that that are that are there from the non. I don't think so. No, that's no, one thing I, I learned early on. I put my LLC, um, and that's another. I didn't think about that from a from a recourse standpoint. You know that those don't show up when you put them on the LLC on your personal credit. Now, you're personally guarantee it, so there's a little bit of difference there. Well, th- it'll show up if you default. If you default, It yeah. will, then, they'll, then right. they'll, they'll report it on you. But if you right. don't and you pay, it never shows up. Right. What are some of the cons of this non-recourse loan? Well, what I've seen is more expensive. <clears throat> Certainly. So probably, you know, could be half percent, one percent more than what your traditional loans are. Same thing the hard money guys think, you know. Mm-hmm. They're, this is a more risky investment for them. Yep. And they got to make money. So I think the underwriting's tougher. You know, for the asset, not the person. Yeah, there you go. But the asset, they're going to check the comps. They're going to have to have a hard rehab bids. They're going to have to, I mean, they're digging deep into that asset. I'll give you an example. I went to one of our hard money guys, the same type thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, I want to borrow on this rental. He's like, well, how much is it? It's like 38000 Okay. He went by there and he goes, I'll give you twenty (laughs) two. See, he didn't, he thought it was worth thirty. Sure. So he wanted 25% down. Right. He's like, if you want to come up with the rest of it, that's fine. He goes, I only want to be in it for this. Hmm. Of course, we didn't buy it. But right. it, that's the perfect example of, you know, um, more underwriting in the sense of they're way more strict on the property versus you. Yes. Because if you default, then they're going to end up with that property. Yeah, what are they going to do with it? They're, they're looking at what their out is. That's right. And the most profitable way to get out of that asset. So, that's right. And then the loan to values are going to be lower. Yeah, they want more skin so in the game. What you just described. You know, yeah. They want more skin in the game. So they're not going to loan as, as uh, the percentage. You know, I've heard 60%, 70%. Yeah. So they're going to have, you know. They're going to have plenty of They're going to have some money there. down. Yeah. So they're going to have some room to, to do something with that asset. Because, you know, one of my my banker buddies, he always we always joke, because when I bring him a house, it's worth 50. If <laughs> the same house, if he brings it to me, it's worth 25. <laughs> Right. Meaning if that bank takes it back, people are always just trying to get a deal out of that bank. They're not going to pay full price or retail no. or even what the most investors pay. And so we always joke about, you know. Oh, it's because you could have two different conversations and the, the value of the home. That's is right. Way if I'm different. bringing him to get a loan, <laughs> man, this thing's worth 50 plus, 65, 60, maybe even 60. You know, and he brings me that same house. Man, I don't know if I, 
can't give you can't give 25. more than 25. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I got to put a lot of work into that's it. The There's a lot of risk. Thing. Hopefully, it, it'll rent for what you say it will. Yeah, that's we're, the, we're playing it up real big. <laughs> oh, I've so had he, plenty of those conversations. <laughs> he, he laughs so much because I mean, he's, I mean, he's dead on. I mean, it's, oh, he's heard it all too. He's heard it all. Yeah, yeah. No, on bank, both sides, bankers, bankers. If you want to get a real true indication of how what investors think and, and how they are, go go talk to a banker that loans to investors. Yeah, because I get calls every week, every week, and he hears two different stories. I yeah. mean, about you know, about two different houses. It's, it's oh, yeah. uh, it's crazy. Pretty funny. We're talking to Dan Butler with Crest Core Realty, and we're talking about recourse versus non-recourse loans. So we just gave you some pros and cons on non-recourse. Yep. Uh, let's do pros and cons of a recourse loan. Yep. Um, what are some of the pros of a recourse loan? So recourse, obviously, when we sign for it, <sighs> you know, less underwriting. You know, they're looking at more on the asset. They're more looking at you. Um, as long as your financials are strong, the interest rates typically are lower. Mm -hmm. you, you typically get a higher LTV. Um, and to me, it's more when they see you signing off on the dotted line. It's more of the relationship you're building a, a banking relationship. That's the, you know. this is the biggest point to me. To me, it is. That's what I, it kind of hit me when I was doing this and just kind of laying it out that it's the relationship. So, you know, we joked when we started buying Douglas Snow, like after you sign the first million, what's it matter? You know, like yeah, because you either have to believe in yourself and what you're doing, and, and and get those relationships so tight with your banking relationships and advocates for you or you shouldn't be doing this so. if you're that far down the road how, what you just mentioned then you're there yeah you know you're committed to it you know one thing that for us you know you know how i joke about absolutes and not allow my kids to use absolute statements and yeah. for us one of one of our absolutes was no money down so we wanted to buy all our assets with no money down because we wanted to keep the cash for those emergencies for cash flow for roofs and so keep things going so we gave you know we gave up. We're willing to sign personal guarantees for no money down. It was a trade off for us. Does that yeah. make sense? Absolutely. Do the bank and the banks are good with it. I mean, you know, I would say they're they're all, know, they're, they're fully they're on board. full rose. You know, it's all rosy and all that stuff. So you have to you know work the deal and figure out how to make that happen. But you know, we've been successful so far. Again, goes back to your terms, their price, price, price terms. Yep, that's all. That's all that is. So. Um, less underwriting are some of the pros, lower rates, typically higher LTV. And then of course the bank gets to know you. So mm -hmm. I like that one. I want to point that out again. Yeah. Uh, some of the pros to a recourse loan is the bank gets to know you. I mm -hmm. mean, they get to figure out what kind of borrower you are, uh, how serious you are about, um, you know, the personal guarantee. I mean, yeah. it just goes so much further. Uh, so th that's I, a good one there. And I can't tell you how many people that I've met in this business, that don't understand that they got to get that banking relationship going, you know, because they think bankers are dime a dozen. I, I don't know if that, I just don't know. There's a disconnect between moving forward and getting the business gin in and all that stuff and how you need to use, you know, OPM, yeah. rich dad, poor dad over the other people's money. And, uh, you know, I, that's what I spent my first several years, you know, building a Rolodex of bankers that, yeah. And you learn what each bank wants. And so when you learn what each bank wants and what their appetite is and how they function, yep. you get a deal come through. Oh, wait, that bank likes this kind of deal. Oh, wait, that bank, oh, commercial, that guy will just fly that deal through. Does that make sense? Uh, you're, you're, hitting a, you're hitting a lot of buttons, yes. Yeah. It, it, and people should listen and pay attention to that. If you're that yeah. investor that's listening now, we've talked about building, a, building your vendor partners and your, your um, network and that yeah. sort of thing. Multiple bankers. And I'll give you, yeah. so this isn't just me talking. You and Douglas have a large portfolio. H mm -hmm. How many bankers do you guys deal with? You got half a dozen? At least. Okay. At some point, it was up to probably 10 or 12. We've consolidated a little bit as we've gotten older and wiser and yeah. just just because. But, Needs I mean, there's, there's, there's 20 banks that I still talk to that I have a sheet that I've Okay, so that ought to be some of the most valuable information that you hear on this show today is 20. Now, not everyone's going to have y'all's portfolio, but you might need three bankers. Oh, yeah. you might need four. You know what I mean? It's a, it, you might not have to have 20, but you need multiple bankers on your side, on your mm -hmm. team to do exactly what you just said. This house comes in. Wow. That banker likes it. This house comes in. This one over here likes it. I love yeah. that analogy. Well, I mean, I mean, just, uh, yesterday I was talking to two different bankers, to set up an officer's guidance line, you know, and so we're trying to have two or three of those set up. Yeah. So that you have options when a deal comes through, 
you know, an offer's guidance line is basically where a bank says, Mr. Borrower, I'll loan you up to $250,000 for however many deals you want to do, whether it's one or 10 or five or whatever. And you're set up to, to kind of use the facility to, the bank has said, we'll sign off on you buying those assets as long as they make sense. Yeah. So you're kind of a, kind of a pre-approval, kind of like a, you know, in the retail world, getting that letter, you know what I mean? The yeah, pre-approval, pre-approval letter. letter. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of the same thing as the offers guys line. Guys, we're going to take a real quick break. I'm talking to Dan Butler here about uh, recourse versus non-recourse loans. Uh, we've gone over the pros and cons of a non-recourse. We've talked about the pros of a recourse. When we come back, we'll have the cons of a recourse loan. Uh, we might be able to touch on uh, the contractor triangle, too, before we go. So okay. you guys stay tuned. Uh, you're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on 107.9 The Voice. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. We'll be right back after this. Now, here's Mid-South weather from News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center. Brought to you by the Crescent Club. Hosting the people and ideas that move Memphis forward for nearly 30 years. Poplar and I-240. Call for a free tour at 901-684-1010. Continued mostly sunny and comfortably cool with high temperatures nearing 60 today. Light north winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Temperatures will drop with the clear skies and calm winds overnight. Mid and upper 30s by daybreak. Sunshine and southerly winds warm us to near 70 on Wednesday. Come see ESP Insurance, your local Safeco insurance representatives for your home, auto, business and insurance needs. Call 901-272-2244. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers on The Voice FM 107.9. 9 and AM 990. Griffin, Cliff, Everton, and Mashmeyer PLLC is a full-service law firm with over 50 years of experience in the Memphis area. Real estate closings have continued to be the forefront of their law practice, which include residential, commercial, and development real estate transactions, drafting and negotiation of real estate contracts and leases, business information, preparation of wills, probate, and estate planning. Their firm represents a number of builders, developers, investors, and local lending institutions and is approved to close transactions for most local banks and mortgage companies. In addition, they offer title search, title examination services, and title insurance through several well-established title insurance companies in the Memphis area, as well as Tennessee and Mississippi. They strive to offer services in a prompt and timely fashion while advising and representing clients in a zealous and professional manner. Should their offered services be of need, please contact William N. Griffin Jr. or any of their attorneys at 901-752-1133. They can also be found online at www gcemlaw.com or on Facebook. Is it a good time to buy or refi? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Are interest rates going sky high soon? Hi, I'm Moody Calloway, the mortgage lady at iBank Mortgage. I tell my customers to ask questions, get answers. So join me every Monday morning at 8 and I will tell you what's going on in today's still changing mortgage world. Remember, most people think about mortgages a few times in their lives. I think about them every single day. Tune in Mondays at 8. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, welcome back to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Uh, Let's see here. Right before we left, we're talking about uh, recourse, non-recourse loans. Yeah. We gave you uh, pros and cons of non-recourse, and then, of course, we gave you some pros on the recourse. Let's talk for a second here. We got uh, about 10 minutes. What is, uh, give me some cons of the recourse loan. You know, they can go after your personal assets. That's the biggest one. So, Mm -hmm. like, if you borrowed, you know, say half a million dollars, and you defaulted on that loan, and there was a balance, you know, of 300000 and they had to foreclose on it and could only get 200000 mm-hmm. So there's $100,000 there that's missing <laughs> in this equation, right? Because <laughs> of that example I gave where the banker said, well, I'm not paying more than twenty five, or I'm not paying the banker more than twenty five. Right. So, But they want to move it quick because they don't want it on the REO. Yep. They do not want it on their foreclosure list. That's a bad – that's regulators. You know, I mean, that's just – they're scared to death of that. So 
they're going to come after that 100000 one way or another. Right. So they're going to come after your personal house, your cars, something, something you know. So, right. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, you know, and they're, and they're lending against you. So you become, you know, at some point that also limits your buying power. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole point, that the, a bigger point that the non-recourse guys try to say, well, you can buy, you know, hundreds of houses with us yeah, because there is no personal guarantee. They're not doing a, a debt service coverage ratio on you. They're not, you know, whereas the, the, the banks are doing that. They're, they're checking that every time you're doing deals mm-hmm. to make sure you're, you have enough income between your personal and your houses mm-hmm. that you're over one, what they call 1.0, you know, they're a one-to-one. Right. You know, so if you make a hundred thousand and your rental brings in 10,000, you know, do you have 110,000 worth of expenses or are you more right. like 90,000? So you, they're going to You asked that me that during stuff. the break, are you, you know, are you afraid of a non, of a, of a recourse loan? It's like, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I never borrow money <laughs> with the yeah. intent to not, but let me borrow this money from you, Mr. Banker. But, you know, in three years, I'm planning on not paying this. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like, I don't, I yeah. don't have any. You're going to take this back at three. I'm just going to borrow it for three years. <laughs> yeah. You know, and right. we, we looked at it like, you know, there are senior partners in this deal, you know, so. Yeah. They are really your partner. They're trying to make it sure you're both going to win. Yeah. And so if you go into it with the mindset, well, you know, I'm not personal guarantee, and that's basically saying, I, I don't know if I can make it. That that's is what exactly. I, that's kind of how saying. I feel. Now, it'd be fun to get some comments from Facebook to see what they say, to see what how their feelings. Is that are. not the way you would look at it? If you were a banker and somebody came in and you wanted to do a, a, a recourse loan on them, and they were like, ah, uh, I don't know yeah. about. That. I mean. Don't you immediately think to yourself, well, is he not confident what he's doing? Yeah. He's got a plan. He's got, he, you know, he, something's fishy. In the back of his head, he thinks he might not pay this. Right. No, I don't have any problem with him. Yeah, it's interesting because, like I said, it's a big topic that people, a lot of investors we talk to that don't want to do. I have a, a couple right now that are working on non-recourse loans. Yeah. And they're they're trying, because it, it's two partners, and they're putting them in an LLC, so they're, they're trying to keep their personal finances out of it. Mm-hmm. They want the LLC to be able to borrow the money. Right. So they're working on trying to find out how to do this. So, yeah, yeah no, that, that's I don't ever have any trouble with with the recourse loan because I am, you know, my intention is to pay it back. So, you know, in, in a nutshell, you know, talking about non recourse and recourse loans, I mean, to me, it's if you're going to borrow the money, pay it back. I mean, you know, if you want to build up a, a non, you know, your LLC, I mean, can you borrow it through your LLC with a personal guarantee? Is that something you can do? Can you borrow it through your LLC? Have your LLC borrow the money with you personally guaranteeing it? So your yes. LLC can build up the credit history and can build that up so they can the no, LLC can get the loan. Most that's what, well, even on the on the recourse yeah, recourse loans of banks, you put an LLC, the LLC is the one that's paying the note, but there's always a personal guarantee behind it. Right. So you're guaranteeing it with the LLC and you're guaranteeing it with the personal. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a non recourse, but when I sign documents, there's one for the the LLC, and there's one for for, you, for Leah, yeah. and there's one for Dan, yeah. you know, and there's one for Douglas, and one for his wife. So we should bring Leah in here and talk about. Yeah, let's Douglas. see how she feels about that topic. <laughs> yeah, let's don't do that. <laughs> we'll bring her in here and discuss this and see how see how that goes. Um, you know, we we talked today about two two good topics. Um, you know, interest rates and what to do. Um, you know, we discussed. You know, buying now, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't want there to be a fear in any investor out there, um, based on rising interest rates. It's not, it's That's not an anything to be paralysis. afraid. Of. That's exactly right. It, it's not anything to be afraid of. No. It's not anything to to make you feel nervous. You just have to adjust your numbers. You have to adjust the way you buy. We always say this on this show to buy right. Uh, do you, Do you think there was investors buying back? Uh, when we were kids, when the interest rates were 12, 18 percent. Well, yeah, yeah, somebody they was. They just had to adjust the way that they, right. they purchased. So, yeah, I I think you know, in today's market, my first thing would be, if you're not out of the gate, get out, mm-hmm. get out and start. Right. Get out and get you a few houses under your belt. If you're out of the gate and you're 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 around in the you know second turn and you've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten houses, you might want to look at some permanent financing or as permanent as you can get it. Yeah. Right. Fix it as long as you can. <clears throat> That's right. If you're, if you're worried about it, you know, and, yeah. and it's always been in the back of our mind. It's always part of our deal. We're always thinking about how long, 
you know, can we put this out? That's right. When it's a good interest rate. Yeah. You know, when it's a bad interest rate, you're just, you know, you're okay with paying it off. You know, a, th- a three year arm where you have to, you know, refinance the three years kind yeah. of thing. So, uh, you know, I, I, the, the intimidation <laughs> factor shouldn't be there because you, you'll just be able to change the way you buy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I would argue, I hadn't, we hadn't talked about this, but <clears throat> say you get a 6% loan. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. You get a 6% loan that you're on a 15-year amortization that you can lock in for three years. Mm-hmm. All right. Or I'll give you 6.5% interest, but I'm going to lock it in for seven. Which one are you doing? Uh, 6.5 or 7. And why would you, why would you do that? A quicker payoff. Yeah, I would say, yeah, because you're, you're going to, you it forces pay, me to stay forces, on my timeline. Yeah, you stay on your timeline. Yeah. You got seven years so that you can be paying that thing down. Is that the wrong answer? It's, no, I, I mean this. It's, Th- that's it's to all, me. That to me seems. I think you just lock it in for the longer period of time, so you got a secure timeline of what you know. You can look at what seven years from now what your payoff looks like. Yeah, and so it's worth it for that half percent locking it. Not to mention, you know, we didn't talk about this, but and this is probably another show that we could get into, but. You know, every time you have that three year or that seven year or five year come up, there's expenses. That's you know, another. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like a bank yeah. wants an appraisal. There could closing be costs. Some sometimes there's a closing cost. Some banks just, you know, and that's again that's what learning your banks. Like some banks, they'll just look at Shelby County Assessor, run a, a BPO, you know, and pay for it. And some make you want to do a four hundred fifty dollar appraisal. Come on, man, we just did this three years ago, and the market's gone up twenty percent. Why would I want an appraisal? But then you end up spending a thousand bucks to refinance. Does that make sense? I would take the shorter. I would take the the higher rate in the shorter term. That's me though. The longer term. The yeah, seven I'm sorry. year. Yeah. The seven year. Yes. And the higher, to make sure I then I at least knew what was coming. Yeah, you you, you, know, you, I plan you out secure and, your 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 yeah. um, your future. I totally agree with that. I think that's what you gotta um, you focus on. Yeah. It's just lock it in as long as you can, and and I think it's worth that half percent myself. But I do too. Uh, we then moved into recourse and non-recourse loans, kind of what the differences are between these. Um, we went through some pros and cons of each one of those. I've got investors that do both. Uh, you've done both, mm-hmm. right? Um, so uh, it, it was some good conversation today on on our loans and interest rates, that sort of thing. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I mean, this is stuff that we try to bring to our audience that, that can really benefit them in their actually everyday investing life. So, absolutely. uh, appreciate good you guys stuff. listening. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff today. We're going to post the show on the Facebook page here shortly, probably within the hour. So if you missed anything, you can go back and take a listen to that. It's on the Memphis real estate hour. Uh, so check out also www.crestcoolrealty.com for your investments of the week. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, you caught the Memphis real estate hour. We'll catch you next Tuesday at 8 a.m.